Okay, in this video, we are doing Calc A, B, problem set 90. 90 problem sets. All right, problems and, uh, I don't know. Oh yeah, the playlist is in the description below. I'm still not good at that. Uh, all right, let's look at the problems. Uh, number one, if G is differentiation, what? I think uh, spell check or like autocorrect got me there. I think it's, if G is differentiable with G of X less than zero for all X and F prime of X equals X squared minus X minus six times G of X, find and classify the critical points of f of x. So this is kind of neat because it's a little bit of a twist on a normal problem, right? Normally you're just given like the function and you have to do the work. Here we have like something times g of x. That's interesting. Also, we have the derivative to begin with. So um, I'm going to factor the x squared minus x minus 6 because we need to know the zeros of the derivative because those are the critical points. So uh, it's going to factor into x minus 3, x plus 2, and then there's nothing you can do with g of x at all. So our critical points are going to be at uh, 3 and negative 2, because that's where the derivative equals 0. Now we need to make a sign chart for this. So we're going to have f prime, uh, negative 2 is on there, 3 is on there. Keep in mind, g of x is always less than 0. So g of x cannot contribute a critical point. Um, and also, g of x will impact the overall sign of things, but only in the sense that it's always contributing a negative, right? Like so. Anything we plug in, we're going to be like, well, g of x is negative, and then what else happens? So for starters, if I plug in like negative a billion, g of negative a billion is negative, and then we also get negative negative, that's three negatives. So negative here. This is how these problems get you, like this type of problem, where you'll like forget about g of x, and you'll have all the signs wrong, and therefore you'll get the maximums and minimums confused. All right, uh, negative two comes from a factor of degree one, that's odd, so there will be a sign change. 3 comes from x minus 3 to the first. 1 is odd. There will be a sign change. So we get this. So like if it had just been x minus 3 times x plus 2, it would have gone plus minus plus. But g of x is flipping all the signs because g of x is always negative. All right. So there's definitely a relative min at negative 2 because f prime goes negative to positive there. So let's write that. There's definitely a relative maximum at 3 because f prime goes from positive to negative there. So let's write that. All right. And we're good. Next problem. Well, I mean, I'm saying we're good. Uh, a particle moves with position function x of t equals 2t cubed minus 21t squared plus 60t minus 30. Find the position of the particle at each time the particle's velocity is zero. So again, a lot of the questions in the last couple problem sets have just been twists on like more normal questions that we've done a lot of. We're going to find the velocity function. So the velocity is the derivative of position. You have to start with that. Can't stress it enough. I've been stressing it and every time this has come up in a problem set. So now just power rule this thing. Uh, 6t squared minus 42t plus 60. I'm going to take a 6 out of everything, but not make you watch me write that. So 6 quantity t squared minus 7t plus 10. I'm going to factor t squared minus 7t plus 10 into t minus 2 and t minus 5. That'll look like this. V of t is 0 then at 2 and 5. Like, what, what were the values in the last problem? I don't remember. I feel like we're doing the same thing here. Uh, so that's when velocity is zero. Now we need to find the position, which means we just need to plug these into the position. I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity to do some synthetic division. So two goes in the house and then two, negative 21, 60, negative 30. Remember what we're looking for here is the remainder. So drop down, multiply, add down, multiply, add down, multiply, add down, the remainder, which is 22, is x of 2. So the position at 2 is going to be 22. And then we're doing it again. So 5 goes in the box. You got your 2, your negative 21, 60, negative 30, well, negative 30, not 31. Drop down, multiply, add down, multiply, add down, multiply, add down. The remainder, negative 5, is x of 5. So like, you're probably more familiar with synthetic division uh, where it goes in evenly and you get a remainder of zero. You just get like the value of the function where you're plugging in. Like that's what you're getting. It's just like if it goes in evenly, you would get zero because it would be a zero of the function. Um, here we're exploiting that and using what's called the remainder theorem. All right, next up. Evaluate the limit as h approaches zero of e to the h minus one over three h. So this like looks weird because there's like an E in it. But as soon as I see H approaches zero, I'm immediately thinking this is the definition of the derivative. Like they could definitely make a problem where that's not the case. 
but I, I, they don't. <laughs> um, so as soon as you see the limit as h approaches zero, you're like, definition of the derivative, how does it apply to this? Well, this three that's down here shouldn't be here, so I'm gonna factor it out as a constant multiple. So one third, limit as h approaches zero. Now, I have e to this something, but I'm thinking definition of the derivative. Like, what would I be plugging in to get e to the h? It must be zero plus h. So it's really e to the zero plus h. And then uh, now I'm thinking the function is e to the x, so it would be minus e to the zero and then all over h. And this is definitely the definition of the derivative with zero plugged in, right? Like, cause normally it'd be limit as h approaches zero, e to the x plus h minus e to the x over h, but we replaced all the x's with zeros. So the function's e to the x, the derivative is e to the x, and then I need to find the derivative at zero. That's what the question is telling us to do. f prime of zero is e to the zero, which is one, so this problem is just saying do one third times one. The answer, I believe, is one third. Kind of a little twist on the definition of the derivative. All right, and let's do one more. This is a throwback and not a twist. Given that g of x is f inverse, write the equation of the line tangent to g of x at x equals two based on the table of values above. Okay, standard derivative of the inverse question. Or, well, yeah, but we want the tangent line, but still derivative of the inverse question. So I like to start out by writing g of x and I write f of x. And I want to like really nail down my ordered pairs, right? So for g of x, the ordered pair is two comma something. On f of, f of x, it's something comma two. So now I go to the table, which tells me values of f of x, and I look for where y is equal to two. Right there, that's where y is equal to two. That's when x is six. So on f of x, it's six, two, which means on g of x, it's two, six. I'm trying to find g prime of two, and now I know that that is one over f prime of six. And f prime of six is negative five from the table. So this will be one over negative five or negative one fifth. And then our tangent line, make sure you use the ordered pair from g of x. So our tangent line is going to be y minus six equals negative one fifth, the quantity x minus two. That's the problem set. Uh, I hope this was helpful and good luck.